So the World Junior's been good so far, eh? Yep. Yeah, I got Tyler back here with me, big Leafs fan, uh, coming into the Scotian Canadian studio to talk World Juniors. Uh, it's been fantastic so far. So uh, before we get into it, make sure to hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell for notifications if you like these videos. And uh, man, it's it was an interesting uh, round robin, definitely for sure. Canada, right off the bat, dominated their group. Um, very impressive showing from them. Their MVPs, you know, obviously Dylan Cousins, Bowen Byram, Drysdale, and yeah. Devin Levi in that has been absolutely fantastic. Very good, very good when called upon. Yeah, um, and I, you have to bring it up. Like, it's just, it's so impressive what Canada's scouting department did, especially in the goaltending situation here. Yeah, for him not to even be invited to the summer camp and... Like Bob McKenzie was saying there the other night, they had nothing else to do. Like they needed goaltending. He, I don't even know if he's played a game yet with Northwestern because I've seen a thing that he had to learn what to do in the commercial breaks, <laughs> like just to keep focus. Yeah. And that's why he gets in the butterfly up around the top of the circles. Yeah. So yeah, um, props really, to them. Props yeah, really them. cool how that worked out. Uh, it really showed the strength of the scouting department there. But yeah, so Canada, you know, there was uh, the game. Obviously, they. they they stomped on Germany, which was somewhat yeah. hard to watch. They only had 14 skaters, and yeah. we got the big old controversy of, you know, there were some prominent names, too, that said we should have less teams in this tournament. Yeah, I, I said something to the extent where it was like, this is the first World Juniors with no NHL going on, so a lot of these people really watched a, ho a an, an international hockey tournament for the first time, like a whole tournament. Like you said, this happens all the time, and I go to the World Championships. Yeah. When you have teams like France going up again, like, they just random, random countries yeah. that you've never even seen the World Juniors. So, yeah, that was just nonsense to me. I didn't yeah, like that. Yeah, a huge bit of nonsense. You can check out my rant on that uh, as well, because it's just it's bogus. Like, how do you grow the game outside of uh, the, the powerhouse countries if you're going to not allow well, teams to come in and play in an I international I hope all those tournament. people watched the quarterfinals last night, too. Yeah, yesterday. exactly. I, I really hope they did. And for How those people, they were. Yeah. yeah, and knock in Germany and, like, those guys didn't do the research and people, go look how many people they were missing. Like this, for what they did, if they have their full roster and guys don't opt out and guys are healthy and all that, that could be a semifinalist team, so. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, Canada uh, dominates Group A, um, so the game against Germany, Austria, and then even uh, against Finland there, uh, the New Year's yeah. Eve game. It, that was a really impressive showing to to really shut down uh, the Finns there. Canada just, no weaknesses throughout the entire roster. No, and I think the key to the Finnish game too is the kind of like the, the weak schedule. Like, let's be honest, it was a weak, weak schedule. Yeah. So I think everybody had the Canada-Finland game scheduled already. It was going to win the group. And you could tell those guys were so fired up for that game. That first 40 minutes was unbelievable. But then it's almost like they felt like they had the game in control. And like we've seen with this team so far in the tournament, sometimes they kind of go into a little cruise control. So I think that was a huge, huge... Uh, a good sign, I'd say, to see them get so fired up for a game. They just come... That 40 minutes was... That might have been the best 40 minutes of the turn by any team. Yeah. Yeah. Really impressive. Um, and then Finland in our group as well. I mean, they were undefeated until facing Canada. So, I mean, you got to expect that, though, just as Canada in this weak group of yeah. the, the lesser teams. But that being said, Germany put up a fight against uh, a few different teams. They get the big win against the Swiss. They get into the, the elimination rounds, which was First great time to see. Ever. Tim Stutzla looking really promising oh. and, and uh, Paterka as well. That, that line yeah. is incredible. Tim Stutzla, I think, was hands down. I mean, Charles Eager's obviously making a case for it, but he, I think he was the best player in this tournament by a, a, a lot. Yeah. Tim Stutz, just, like he's in, he was such insane. a smart player. I think it was the, was it the Swiss game where he had that play? He just put Went the... Under the guy, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Just put the puck into open ice and then knew he'd win that battle and get around him. That was a really impressive And I think play. the cool thing is, too, because you always read about, like, we all knew he was going to be a top pick, so we read about him. I mean, let's be honest, not a whole lot of people watch him play in Germany. So when you see him firsthand, like, his speed is... A whole other level too. Yeah, like he's just an all around. Ottawa's got a good one there. Like he's a stud. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was really hoping LA be taking Stutz. Oh, he's I mean, a stud. Dealing with Quinton Byfield on Ottawa would be a lot to, to handle, but you, you can definitely see Tim Stutz like coming in and possibly being another. Dreisaitl well, this German I was just gonna say this is a reminiscent to when Drysdale ripped out the World Juniors. Like it was a bad. Or not a, I mean, this team, German team, was good, but it wasn't like a top team. Nobody kind of kind of flew under the radar. People knew he was a good player, but they didn't know to the extent and. Yeah. I mean, this was he strong was leadership of, qualities too. Well, calling was, out the team after the Canada yes. game and yeah, Sm like getting pissed when they're getting laid up like that. You, like, you just unbelievable. Like I have so much, so much props to that German team, man. Like I will be rooting for them next year, big oh, time. Yeah, I'm happy they sure. don't get relegated. I'm happy they'll be back because they deserve it. Yeah, big time. So then we transition over to Group B, and this this uh, group was a little bit deeper, some more stiffer competition for the teams. And we started on Canada Day with U.S. Russia, and uh, the 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 U.S. dropped this one to Russia. I think it was five three. That was a really good game back and forth. I think you could kind of tell though that the Russians, you know, 
are the more experienced, the yeah. more the more you know well well oiled team. They were the better team in that game, I yeah. thought, by a bit. Now there was a yeah. really tournament. The Americans had a lot of guys not playing, but yeah, I think the Russians. Yeah. Were. So the Russians, the Russians obviously look really strong through the through the group uh, session, but there was the upset from uh, the Czechs. I'm telling you right now, like that gave me goosebumps just watching that game, and I don't even mean the <laughs> celebration, but like anybody who's played hockey, like blocking shots yeah. is just one of those things that sometimes. You notice it after they start building up, but when you're like sacrificing your body the way that those kids did, like that, I mean, come on, like that was unbelievable. Just forwards. grinded like, oh, out a win, and their goalie too. We saw it last night yeah. in the quarterfinal against Canada, but Mrazek or no, Malik, his father was the guy who scored the yeah. the goal between the legs in yeah. the shootout. Yeah, just uh, very impressive showing for for the Czech goalie, and so uh, so they they upset Russia, but then Russia goes on to uh, close out the uh, the group. Uh, quite well um and then the states i mean other than that loss on canada day against russia they w ended up going on a, sh a huge shutout streak spencer yep. knight and net and obviously the MV mvps for them trevor zegras is looking real good Knock out Jake, points. oh my, oh my god he's, the way he can snipe and just his he vision takes is unbelievable yeah. like yeah he's it's 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 a whole new level just at this age group what he does with the his yeah. vision is unbelievable yeah. you got to think he might not have been on their team if, if the nhl was going on it that'd be a yeah, if, if, if Anaheim. Anaheim was a good team and they were going to be a contending team, I don't think Jersey was at this tournament mm. at all. So, yeah, uh, and um, yeah, and that Spencer Knight with the shutout streak. That, Spencer Knight, you know, the show, he, Dustin Wolf chipped in with that shutout streak also. But yeah. Spencer Knight after that Russian game, he's looked very good, mm. like very good. Even the game against uh, the Slovaks, even the Czech game, he's had to make some saves because the Americans were only up one nothing after the first. Yeah, and he had to make some saves. So yeah, he looked really good too. Yeah, so uh, the, the U.S. end up closing out the their group quite strong, but then then they uh, go into the quarterfinal and they win their quarterfinal. Yeah. Uh, it was probably good for them to face a little adversity last night. Slovaks yeah. make a pushback. So yeah. uh, same probably, against Canada. Like Slovaks played Canada hard. Really, I'll tell you now that Slovak team returns fourteen players next year. None of those guys are going to be in the NHL. So you don't got to worry about if those fourteen guys. If they don't, that team could make some noise. Actually, they can be a rowdy team next yeah, year. A yeah. Real rowdy Pull off team. Some big, huge upsets. Goaltender who played great last night. He's only eighteen. He'll be back next year too. Wow. Yeah. So uh, and then the other quarterfinals we had Canada uh, last night versus mm. the Czechs. That mm. was a good game. Uh, the, the Czechs gave uh, Canada a little harder time than, than even Finland did. Uh, yeah. for, they it, they ended up shutting them out. Devin Levi's been incredible. Oh uh, yeah, I think a lot just, of people were questioning like, oh well, let's see what he does. He faced shots last night. He faced some quality shots yeah. last night. And Ray did a good job pointing out one time just him following the puck in his crease. He's on his game. I'm not too worried about the goal thing. I think. As Canadians, we can take a little step back this year, not necessarily yeah. worry about the goaltending as much in previous years. Yeah. And how about what ended up being the game winner, that alley oop pass from Connor McMichael? Just put it in a perfect spot. Dylan Cousins just, you know, took off and finished it. Well, I think that was another big thing was McMichael's had some points this turn, but him getting the goal last night too, even though it was an empty netter, that was big. He's uh he's one of those guys that He's almost like Dylan Cousins. Dylan Cousins has been producing, but they're not super flashy players. Right. They're just always in the right spot. They do their job. Connor Michael was just in three posts there the other night against yeah. uh, Finland, it was. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love Dylan Cousins. I think I, I fell in love with this kid. Mm. Like, another guy's going to be playing against the Leafs and Habs. I know. But, I... man, like, I just love how he's not super flash. Three goals that I've seen for sure that he turned a puck over in his D zone. And then moved up ice and boom in the back of the net. Just instant defense to offense. That guy's awesome. I love him. I think he's yeah. workhorse from White Horses. Yeah, really. What an awesome, awesome, game. Yeah. awesome yeah. name. Fits him yeah. perfectly. Also in Group B was Sweden, who ended up losing their uh their what 15 year yeah, quite round robin too. streak. Yeah, they end up losing two games in a row to end the round robin. Yeah. Uh it was the Russians, they lost that game. In and, overtime. Yeah. And, and the Americans laid them out. Exactly. And uh yeah, so then in the quarterfinals they end up losing to Finland as well. So well that that they're late comeback. Yeah, like I feel so bad for the Swedes in the sense where they just they're turning into a joke for this tournament. Mm. And I mean, I know they're missing their top center. He was COVID. Um, that Anfield, the goal, he just completely fell apart. When, once that first goal went in the American game, yeah. and then the second one from below the goal line, his, he just completely fell apart. The Finns took it to them yesterday. Like, that wasn't one of those pesky Finns hanging around. They squeak one out. They did squeak one out. But that last 40 minutes, the Finns took it to the Swedes. Yeah. Just took it to the Swedes. So I think, you're, I think the top four teams are in it. Um, Swedes will be back. I mean, they're they're a hell of a nation, like always. But yeah, I mean, yeah, and I mean, they did face a lot of adversity coming into this, losing their entire coaching oh. staff, all the positive tests for players. So it was just too much to overcome. But even past that, I mean, they've always dominated in the round robin. Yeah. Can never seem to get it done past yeah. that. So 
how do you go 15 years with all those wins and then what one gold medal that's maybe this is a good thing for him going forward you yeah. get bounced early to your arch rival you don't have a great you know round robin maybe you know maybe that's make sure they get over the hump yeah now all that being said we've got we're going into the semifinals now and we're going to preview that but i think the four teams that remain are the four most deserving yeah. the strongest teams yeah. by far in this tournament so Make sure to check out Tyler and I's preview of the upcoming semifinals where we make some predictions. And if you want some more content from Coleman and I, also check out uh, our preview of the upcoming Canadian division in the NHL. Tyler being a Leafs fan, myself a Habs fan. It's some great content. I really think you guys will enjoy it. All the links you need are down in the description or showing right here. Cheers, guys.